Before the days of Fire Emblem, developer Intelligent Systems had another turn-based strategy RPG at the forefront of its efforts. The first title, in what would later become an entire series, was known as Famicom Wars. You see, Advance Wars was just the first game in the series that we received in the West, and if we've learned anything from the Fire Emblem series, there were certainly a handful of predecessors that we never got. What's going on guys? My name is Stevie. Welcome to Lucky Crit. Today we're discussing what happened to Advance Wars. Famicom Wars debuted on the Nintendo Family Computer System, Famicom, on August 12, 1988. Development began as Intelligent Systems changed its direction from creating hardware to developing simulation games. Famicom Wars was a turn-based strategy game where the player employed an army of units against an enemy force. Units were expendable and could be created and deployed from bases or capture cities for more funds every turn. Many different types of units were featured, each having its own purpose and contribution to the depth of the gameplay. The goal of the game was either to conquer the enemy's headquarters or destroy all remaining enemy units. Famicom Wars turned out to be a big success for Intelligent Systems. Its reception and acclaim, being heralded as one of the best simulation games, would ensure the game would spawn numerous sequels. Several Game Boy Wars games followed, including Game Boy Wars Turbo and Game Boy Wars 2 and 3, which were developed by another company known as Hudson Soft. And there would even be a Super Famicom installment by the name of Super Famicom Wars before we ever saw the release of a Wars game in the West. The success of the series, altogether referred to as the Wars series, is also partially responsible for paving the way for Western audiences to get games like Fire Emblem and other strategy RPGs. Before Advance Wars hit the United States on the Game Boy Advance in September 2001, Nintendo felt that Western consumers wouldn't be interested in turn-based games or more complex and complicated games like the Wars series. In order to appeal to a wider audience, developers made the mechanics of Advance Wars for Game Boy Advance easy to understand and provided the players with an in-depth tutorial within the game that resulted in players not having to read through the game menu. Designer Kentaro Nishimura commented that Advance Wars' success shifted Nintendo's attitude over Western tastes. And it truly did. Upon release, the game received universal acclaim according to Metacritic. Julian Gallup, of XCOM and Rebel Star developing fame, declared that Advance Wars, besides being influential, opened up the market for similar games on handheld video game systems. Advance Wars went on to be rated the 26th best game made on a Nintendo system in Nintendo Power's Top 200 Games list. Nintendo Power gave the game a perfect 5-star rating, stating that Advance Wars treads on new ground, taking the strategy genre to a place where gamers of all tastes will be gung-ho for it. In their October 2013 issue, the UK video game magazine Edge retroactively awarded the game 10 out of 10, one of only 23 games to achieve that perfect score in the magazine's 20-year history. The follow-up to Advance Wars, Advance Wars 2 Black Hole Rising, provided much of the same as its predecessor, and though it didn't do much to change the core gameplay or innovate, it was also a success. IGN journalist Craig Harris commented after E3 2003 that Black Hole Rising doesn't have an overwhelming sense of newness. After the events of the first game, while the Allied nations were still recovering from the war in Cosmoland, the Black Hole Army quickly recovered and decided to launch a large-scale invasion of Macroland. Thus, Andy and company returned for another round of battling the Black Hole Army, led by Sturm. Only one new unit was added, the Neo Tank, alongside two new terrain features, missile silos and pipelines. Enemy factories and other facilities were also added into the game, but they were only featured in certain campaign missions. Super CO powers also spiced up gameplay somewhat, providing a more expensive but also more powerful version of the standard CO powers in the first game. This gave the player even more ways to approach playing the game, either by choosing to use the less powerful CO powers more often, or by saving up for the stronger versions. Interestingly, Japan didn't even receive the original Advance Wars game and its sequel, Advance Wars 2 Black Hole Rising, until three years later in 2004. This was due to the September 11th attacks occurring the day after its North American release date on September 10th, 2001. That same year, Intelligent Systems began work on Advance Wars DS, which later released in 2005 as Advance Wars Dual Strike. Dual Strike continued the story of Andy and company in the Orange Star Army, this time facing a new leader of the Black Hole Army in Omega Land, and featured a number of new innovations for the series, including dual front campaign missions where the player could wage two battles at once, new units and properties, new modes like survival and combat, and local wireless multiplayer battling. 1UP.com commented that the game is a much greater step forward in the series than its predecessor, Black Hole Rising, and that the game was greatly enhanced by the addition of the second screen. Advance Wars Dual Strike was the 301st best-selling game of 2005 in Japan, selling around 35,000 copies in its first 10 weeks. Even with its new innovations and critical praise though, the series was beginning to become fatigued, and long-term, it sold significantly less than its two predecessors.
During the development of Dual Strike, Nintendo also sought to bring Advance Wars to the Nintendo GameCube, and thus, Battalion Wars was born. Though it boasted similar unit types and a similar cartoony setting, Battalion Wars was a real-time tactics game featuring some third-person shooter aspects, and it was developed by Kuju Entertainment instead of Intelligent Systems. In Battalion Wars, the player was able to actively transfer control throughout many units and could also give group or unit commands. It featured ground and aerial combat and was no longer grid-based, allowing the player to traverse large maps and areas in real time. At one point, Nintendo planned to release the game as part of the Advance Wars series under the title Advance Wars Under Fire, but its concept never intended to have this connection in mind, and because of its otherwise unrelated gameplay elements and storyline, the title was ultimately changed to avoid confusion prior to its release. This resulted in the Advance Wars branding being abandoned in the West in favor of the title Battalion Wars. Though not quite as successful as its Game Boy Advance counterparts, Battalion Wars received generally positive reviews, scoring 8.8 .8 on IGN.com and 4 out of 5 stars from X-Play, where they complemented the game's emphasis on strategy and third-person shooting, as well as its cartoonish art style, while they criticized the sometimes clunky controls and lack of a multiplayer option. It also went on to spawn a sequel, Battalion Wars 2, for the Nintendo Wii in 2007 for America and 2008 for other territories. Battalion Wars 2 featured new naval combat, unlike its predecessor, and included many new naval units. The game's map screen was also improved, allowing the player to give commands through it, and it also featured three online multiplayer modes, including Skirmish, Assault, and Cooperative. Battalion Wars 2 received positive reviews as well. IGN rated the game 8 out of 10, citing an impressive story mode, addition of naval units, mostly intuitive controls, and fun online modes. Some criticisms of the game included that Kuju Entertainment failed to capitalize on or misuse the Wii console's control enhancements, the inability to play through the single-player campaign in online co-op mode, and the lack of voice chat. GameSpot gave it a 7.5 out of 10 for its much-improved storyline pacing, decent online play features, and excellent production values, with the downsides being that the strategy was rather light, overly simple, and the AI and story were rather modest. The official Nintendo magazine in the UK gave the game a 90%, criticizing the lack of a retreat command and the occasionally fiddly controls, but commended the graphics and strong online mode. In the same year, a new Advance Wars title was in development by Intelligence Systems, aptly named Advance Wars DS2, which was then revealed during the 2007 E3 Media and Business Summit. It would later release in early 2008 as Advance Wars Days of Ruin. Days of Ruin deviated heavily from the series' classic cartoony style, bringing the series into a post-apocalyptic, gritty setting with a much darker story to match, this time leaving behind Andy and the Orange Star Army. One of the main reasons for this drastic change of setting between games was that the developers wanted to surprise players. Tim O'Leary, one of the English localizers for Advance Wars Days of Ruin, commented that the design change also came from reading comments from people stating, We like the game, we love the game, but it's the same thing. Days of Ruin featured new units like flare guns, bikes, rigs, anti-tanks, crop dusters, aircraft carriers, gunships, war tanks, and others. CO powers were also reduced in an effort to require the player to employ more tactical approaches to maps. Online battles were also limited to two players, as the developers felt it was too boring for a player to have to wait through three other players' turns. Hard mode was also removed, with developers feeling that the normal mode was designed in such a way that a general audience would enjoy it, and that earning high rankings would be effectively the same as having a hard mode. Though the game was received well overall, having been awarded aggregate scores of 85 and 86 on game rankings and Metacritic respectively, some criticized the change from its charming, cartoony roots to its now more dreary, post-apocalyptic setting. The game was also criticized for the removal of several series staple features and many that fans had come to know and like from previous entries like Dual Strike, but ultimately this resulted in the most balanced experience gameplay-wise and it complemented the newly available online functionality the game provided. Overall, it was another solid entry and did well to continue to adapt the series and innovate to keep it alive. Unfortunately though, After Days of Ruin is where things went dark, and over nine years later, still remains that way. Why was it the last game we got? It didn't do that bad, did it? Let's take a closer look. Looking at the series as a whole, the original Advance Wars hit the series' highest score of 92 out of 100 on Metacritic, with Advance Wars 2 sitting at a respectable 89 out of 100, Dual Strike at 90 out of 100, the Battalion Wars games at both 76 and 75 out of 100, and Days of Ruin at 86 out of 100. Sales-wise, according to VG Charts, Advance Wars sold 700,000 copies worldwide, while Advance Wars 2 Black Hole Rising sold 650,000, and Dual Strike took a dip, selling only 390,000, but the series came back strong with Days of Ruin, selling 610,000. 
Though it's clear by the numbers that the series was in decline beginning with Dual Strike, the changes and enhancements of Days of Ruin seemed to be enough to switch things up and garner more interest in the series again. Advance Wars had also been more successful in North America than it had in Japan, with 1.7 million of total sales between the four main games, Advance Wars 1, 2, Dual Strike, and Days of Ruin, amounting to most of the 2.35 million in global sales, which could seek to hinder the development of another Advance Wars title if Nintendo or Intelligent Systems think their core Japanese audience would not receive a future sequel well. It's unclear what will be on the schedule for Intelligent Systems moving forward, aside from the upcoming Fire Emblem Switch main series title that's currently in development, but it's clear that their focus has shifted away from the War series for the time being. Due to their neglect of the series for the past nine years, fans of the Advance Wars games have even taken to developing their own games based on the series' core elements. The most prominent of these games, slated for release in 2017, is Wargroove. Wargroove is a game being developed by Chucklefish, an independent game studio based in London, UK. Their other game, Starbound, has received critical acclaim upon release. According to their website, Wargroove aims to recreate the charm and accessibility of the titles that inspired it while bringing modern technology into the formula. This modern focus allows for higher resolution pixel art, robust online play, and deep modding capability, ultimately creating the most complete experience for Advance Wars and TBS fans. Visually, Wargroove may at first look a bit different from the Advance Wars games, but many of its mechanics and features that can be gleaned from its trailers look very similar. Maps have similar layouts, and even the battle screen is very reminiscent of that of the War series as well, featuring groups of units battling and unit portraits in the lower part of the screen. The main stylistic difference is that it's now featuring a medieval setting, and you'll be battling with skeletons, warriors, and other fantasy creatures. So it's basically Advance Wars mixed with Fire Emblem. Wargroove will be available for PC, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox One. Even though Wargroove will likely please longtime series fans and give them another great game in a similar vein to seek their teeth into, could we still see another Advance Wars release on the Nintendo Switch? Only time will tell. I sure hope so. If we did get another main series Advance Wars title, it seems that Intelligent Systems would have to continue to advance the gameplay with further innovations to appeal to newer fans and take the series into this new console generation. Though that doesn't seem too hard if you think about the Nintendo Switch's versatility, easily allowing portable multiplayer battles with what could be a brand new and revamped War Room. Players could create and share maps and have the ability to play them with friends, both on the big screen and on the go. Now that would be awesome. I'm sure it also wouldn't be hard for Intelligent Systems to whip up some new gameplay mechanics, alongside some new units that they could also work into the story of this future sequel as well. The general consensus from series fans also seems to be for Intelligent Systems to return to form with the series, with many fans desiring the happy and quirky nature of the original Advance Wars games. I'm sure many, like me, would love to see Andy and company return in a future installment. There's just something so fun and appealing about the cartoony, silly aspect of Advance Wars and the expressions and reactions of COs and other characters during battles. Imagine getting Andy, or another CO, in the Switch port of Super Smash Bros. That would do wonders for the revival of the series. I also want to see Isaac in there too, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. It does seem that a new Advance Wars title could be unlikely with all the love that the Fire Emblem series is getting at the moment, though after finishing development on the upcoming main series Fire Emblem Switch title, it's unclear what Intelligent Systems will focus on next. But if they did give it a chance and attempt to revive the series, hopefully the new Advance Wars title would be the Fire Emblem Awakening of the War series, at least in terms of sales, to rejuvenate interest in the series as a whole. During the time I've spent working on this video, we've also received an interview conducted by Eurogamer about Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia that just so happens to get into discussing a future Advance Wars title. When asked if Intelligent Systems still had interest in the Advance Wars series, Hitoshi Yamagami, producer of the three Advance Wars titles, exclaimed, Personally, I'd love to do Advance Wars, but since it's harder to create relationships between its characters compared to Fire Emblem, I don't have a clear idea of what kind of setting it could have. Masahiro Higuchi, a producer on Shadows of Valentia and developer of the 2001 original Advance Wars, also stated, I hear some of the staff here saying that they want to make one too, so if we have a chance, it's something I'd like to do. This is very good news, as it's clear the team has not forgotten the War series and is up for the task of making a new one if given the opportunity. They're even interested in exploring where the series could go with developing deeper relationships between the characters, so perhaps a future entry would have this as a main focus. While the interview seems to make it pretty clear that nothing is currently in the works, hopefully it's a good sign that someday soon we'll be revisiting the War's world once again, though finding some time in between all of these Fire Emblem releases might be a challenge for them. That's going to wrap up today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please slash the thumbs up down below and comment wars in the comment section. I'd also love to hear some of your best moments and memories of playing through the games in the series and which was your favorite. 
What would you like to see in an Advance Wars title for the Nintendo Switch? If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so for more content like this, and also follow us on Twitter at Lucky Creek Gaming for any news and updates revealed on the fly. And I'll see you all next time.